What you just heard was the final radio transmission between American Airlines Flight 1420 and Little Rock International Airport Air Traffic Control. The seemingly normal domestic passenger flight between Dallas-Fort Worth International and Little Rock International quickly turned south on June 1, 1999. The aircraft and MD-82 battled severe weather conditions before and during the flight. When landing, weather conditions made the pilots contemplate diverting to Nashville or returning to Dallas-Fort Worth. The pilots are forced to divert to a different runway at Little Rock. Can the pilots find a way to save their MD-82, or will it end in catastrophe? In the flight deck, at the head of the controls of the flight, was 48-year-old Richard Bushman. He had logged over 10,000 flight hours, a majority of which were accumulated on the MD-80 series of aircraft. After graduating from the United States Air Force Academy in 1972 and serving seven years in the United States Air Force, Richard flew the Boeing 727 and the previously mentioned MD-80 series aircraft in 1991, both for American Airlines. Flight 1420 was scheduled to depart Dallas-Fort Worth at 8.28 p.m. Central Standard Time and was scheduled to arrive at 9.41 p.m. Central Standard Time in Little Rock. The pilots and flight crew were told about a two-hour delay because of the storms and would consequently be given immense pressure to get the plane in the air. The National Weather Service, or NWS, gave out in-flight advisories that there would be storms along the planned flight route. Airline policy stated that pilots couldn't fly more than 14 hours a day, meaning that this would be the last flight of the day for all six crew members. The first officer took initiative and told the flight dispatcher that they were prohibited to depart past 11.16 p.m. Central Standard Time. The aircraft involved had worn tail number or registration November 215 Alpha Alpha. It was just shy of 16 years old. The MD-82 utilized JT-8D-217C turbofan jet engines. Though the aircraft was equipped with an advanced weather radar, they did not have an alarm system that told the pilots about heavy rain. Finally, at 10.40 p.m., Flight 1420 departed Dallas-Fort Worth northbound to Little Rock, Arkansas. Because of the weather conditions and the wind direction, the crew of American Airlines Flight 1420 were instructed to approach runway 22 left. 35 minutes later, the pilots were told to switch to runway 4 right so they could have a headwind that would help slow the plane down upon landing. The pilots were fortunately able to turn right and do a 90 degree turn and then would turn right again to land on runway 4 right. However, during the turn, the pilots were unable to spot incoming thunderstorms and rainstorms. This is because the weather radar had a narrow path that was restricted to only the front of the aircraft. Shortly thereafter, the co-pilot said they had lost sight of the runway. The thunderstorm had finally rolled in. In order to combat this, the control cleared for an instrument landing system, or ILS, approach. During a rush to land at the airport, the pilots neglected several key checklist items, including failure to arm the automatic spoiler system. A spoiler is a type of reverse thrust that helps significantly in slowing down an aircraft. It redirects airflow and as a result slows the plane down. Another overlooked item was the landing flaps. As a desperate attempt, the pilots lowered the flaps to 40 degrees in order to have proper flaps for landing. Crosswinds at the airport were reported to be 25 knots, which exceeded the 20 knot limit for the MD-82. Unfortunately, despite all the warnings, Captain Bushman continued the landing. The following audio is the real black box cockpit voice recorder of American Airlines Flight 1420. The audio will be edited in order to censor any profanity that was stated during the incident. 
Skip to timestamp 5 minutes and 52 seconds if you wish not to hear it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. After overrunning the runway, the plane had struck the approach lights. It had also struck a structure that is designed to be easily breakable. Normally, the approach lights would collapse and the aircraft wouldn't suffer any significant damage besides damage to the fuselage. But since the approach lights were built on a riverbank with soft ground, they were built extra strong and sturdy. The lights completely destroyed the nose and tore apart the fuselage completely, annihilating the first two rows of the cabin and the cockpit. The aircraft came to a stop and it was destroyed. In addition, it destroyed into three large parts. The most front part was bent to the left, while the other two were heading straight forward. Sometime during the overrun, the plane had actually flipped 180 degrees and was facing the runway that it had originally due to land on, runway 22 left. Immediately, nine people perished, including Captain Bushman. Several passengers were severely injured. If not severely injured, they still had detrimental injuries.